Hi everyone! Welcome back to Nasedyanka, the channel where I talk about Bulgarian history, tradition, culture and faith. So much more the Orthodox Christian faith as well as the monotheistic faith that was established around 17,000 years ago by my country. So this is a continuation of episode 15 and this is part 7. In this part we are going to talk about who is Alexander the Great. This is a continuation from the article which I started translating for all of you written by Ivan Trenev about the 17,000 years of history of Bulgaria, my own home country. So in this article presentation we're going to discuss who was truly Alexander the Great. Uh, you guys are also going to hear me talk about who is the builder of the greatest empire in human history. You will hear me talk about who conquered China for 200 years. And how on earth do these relate to Bulgaria, a country that so few have ever heard about. And I think they should. So, who is Alexander the Macedonian, who is also known as the, the Great you might have heard of Alexander the Great as well as Alexander the Macedonian, it's all the same. So Alexander ultimately is a Bulgarian Pelasgian. He is from the Pelasgians. So if you have not watched the first parts of episode 15, please feel free to refer back to them because they talk about the different parts and countries that Bulgarians um, had established um, in antiquity. So I'm going to include images um, in this video. So if you wait a little bit, I'll show you a few images. I'll do a little tricks. <laughs> um, so the Pelasgians, or also called Argians or Argives, are the indigenous Bulgarian population of today's territory, also called Greece. These different definitions of Bulgarians come from the administrative regions of the Great Bulgarian State, country, that is country. In other words, Bulgaria was a country that was made up from states such as Thrace, Mysia, Macedonia, Illyria, Pel Pelasgia, and so forth and so forth and so forth. There were many. The practice of zoning was created under the influence of the Bil Bilsaga Bulgarians, and Bilsaga and Pelasgians are basically the same, the same, the same people. Those Bulgaria or Bilsaga slash Pelasgian Bulgarians merged into the Bulgarian kingdom of Crete in the third millennium BC. Centuries later, the Pelasgians were also called Macedonians, Thracians, and Mizes or Mysians, Moesians, Mysians. So the Bal in the Balkans, the, desi the designated names of Macedonian Bulgarians, Thracian Bulgarians, Mysian Bulgarians, Illyrian Bulgarians, Pelasgian Bulgarians appeared thousands of years after the single name of Bulgarians. In other words, first, all of the states belonged to one single name, country, nation, Bulgaria. At a later period of time, they became distinguished but also carried the name of Bulgarians after the definition that gave away the regions that they inhabited. So you can check a map that I have included here. So, the Macedonian region gained influence between 640 BC and 148 BC, and it functioned as a Macedonian kingdom. The Bulgarian Pelasgian Alexander the Great ruled this Macedonian kingdom for 12 years, from 336 BC all the way to his death in 323 BC. And so, the Bulgarian Macedonian Alexander the Macedonian, also known as Alexander the Great, ruled the Balkans, Egypt, as well as Persia. 
although he was recognized with great conquest successes, it should be noted that Alexander was not the Bulgarian king who ruled the largest empire on earth, as some chroniclers falsely write. The largest empire ever created was that of Khan Motun of the Bulgarian Dulo family. Let's see a picture of that. Khan Motun, who on earth is he? Have you guys ever heard about him? All right, there is little information about him. It is known that he was from the noble Bulgarian ruling family of Dulo dynasty. Han Motun in Chinese is pronounced Modun or Maodun. So he is the founder of the Hunu Empire. He ruled in the period of 209 through 174 BC. He is the first ruler who was named with the title Han. In English, you guys would spell this as, K, this as K-H-A-N. Um, although the Hunu rulers were called Shanyu, but he gained this noble title. He is of the Dulo family, possibly um, the ancestor and uh, his son, um, he's the son of Han Chumen. Han Mutun created the greatest empire in human history. And so, around the year of 198 BC, the great Bulgarian ruler Han Motun from the Dulo family conquered China for 200 years. He captured the Chinese emperor Liu Pang together with 320,000 uh, in his army and he placed China in vassal dependence on the Bulgarians. Han Motun ruled 27 nations in the 2nd century BC from the Caspian Sea to the Great Ocean, including Japan to Kashmir in the south. He issued a law which, quote, said, whoever sells or gives away even an inch of Bulgarian land to foreigners shall be punished by death, end of quote. Let's look at another picture. So returning to Alexander the Great, or the Macedonian, which is the same, um, refers to the same person, the newcomers from northern Ethiopia, who are the current Greeks, did not understand the language of Alexander the Great, because Alexander, as a Pelasgian Bulgarian, and the entire Macedonian region spoke Bulgarian language, naturally, as did the Bulgarians in Thrace, Mysia, Illyria, and so forth. It's like if you all think about the USA made up of 50 states, everybody st speaks the same language and there is no, no doubt about that. So, I mean, this is common sense. One country, many states, one language. It's like, duh. <laughs> Alexander had nothing in common with the Greeks. Neither in language nor in nationality, which was Bulgarian. Alexander's idol was the Bulgarian hero Bogatir Gurugla, also known as Heracles Hercule Gerakl in Bulgarian language. This is the picture that you guys just saw. Alexander admired Gurugla so much that he called himself the son of Zeus, as did Gurugla, and always boasted that he was a descendant of Hercule. Again, Hercule is the same as Bogatir is the same as Gerakl, the same as Gurugla, 
um, just different pronunciations in different languages over the ages and ages. Note, the Greeks did not know who Zeus was. The first written mention of Zeus was made by the Bulgarian Thracian Homer, who wrote him as Zeus the Pelasgian, in other words, Zeus belonging to the Bulgarian Pelasgians. Please tell me if you ever heard this in your history classes. It would blow my mind for good. Wikipedia will give you the popular nonsense information about Homer, and I'm including that website there just in case, because we're familiar with the popular fraudulent historic information. Zeus was the god of the sun and light for the Bulgarians from the Thracian Pelasgian regions. The ancient Bulgarian word Zeus and the old Bulgarian Svet, Svet actually means light. If you all think about this word, the way we use it is Svet, Svet, Svetlina. This is all light. Svet means um, holy. Svet also means world. Svet comes from Svetlina, Svet, which also means light. It's hard to translate those words in English because you guys would have so many different words describing one single thing, whereas in our language, you can catch the root in order to feel the meaning of what world, holy, and light have to tell us about existence. Tangra is the deep primordial light of the spiritual, whereas Tangra Sius is the visible expressed light. Now we're speaking about thousands of years ago of history of the Bulgarians. And when we travel now into the present time, and you guys know that Bulgarians are an Orthodox Christian country, we in Orthodoxy say the exact same thing. God has uh, uncreated as well as created light. There are uncreated as well as created energies of God. So this is just a little clue. Just remember the Bulgarians created the first monotheistic religion in the entire world thousands of years ago, and they were prepared to comprehend, expect, and understand orthodoxy, which also goes back to the beginning of times. And so out of Tangra, Zeus, um, has only been left out the appellation Zeus, Tangra, Zeus, Zeus. Um, little note here, this, is, this, this also explains the Bulgarian's understanding of Christ's true natures, men and God, as clear as the one and true Orthodox Christian Church teaches. So Alexander the Great became dizzy from his successes and tried to conquer the ancient Bulgarian state or country Bactria, which was one of the few mistakes he made. The Bulgarians from Bactria repelled the attack and defeated Alexander. This is the Bulgarian Alexander the Great's only and only loss, and it was two other Bulgarians. He was a Bulgarian, he lost to his brother Bulgarians. In other words, they were the only ones who knew how to beat him. They knew his tactics, because they are the originators of his tactics, right? They're the same nation. Alexander sobered up, he repented of his actions, and as a sign of goodwill, he offered Bactria 10,000 marriages between men and women from the Balkans and Bactria. Bactria ex accepted the proposal and the marriages were cons consummated. Alexander fell in love with the Bulgarian princess of Bactria, Roxana, and in the spring of 327 BC, he married her. Roxana, whose name means the little star, remained his first wife, and after the mass wedding in 324 BC, Alexander married two more women. Just the practices of his time. Roxana presented Alexander with an heir in 323 BC, who was called Alexander IV. Alexander is known not only as Macedonian. In the old German Bibles, Alexander is described as monarch of Thrace, Bulgarian king of Bulgarian lands. Alexander was buried in the city of his father, Philip II, Philip's polis, present-day Plovdiv, the city where ancient, the ancient name, whose name, ancient name is uh, Philippopolis. So if you guys look at 
Bulgarian map, you can find where Plovdiv, it's a current day city, you can see what its ancient name is, and again, this is Philippopolis, it comes from Alexander the Great's father's name, Philip II, Philip's Polis, which is Philippopolis. It's just, history speaks the facts so loudly, if we only listen and follow, we'll understand all the fraud that our classes have taught us. One part of Alexander's direct heirs remained in the Balkans and another part went to Volga, Bulgaria and took part in the government there. Again, Bulgarians go to Bulgarians. The politicians of today's FYR Macedonia described a new, made up and invented Macedonian history. This is so sad and so tragic. A history with great deeds, drawing from the Balkan Bulgarian history and presenting it as Macedonian. I have promised you guys to make a whole entire different video in the future, but so far all I can say is that current day Macedonian country was fraudulently created uh, under the name of Macedonia and it has not only stolen the true historic facts from its motherland, Bulgaria, it has also distorted them. That's all I will tell you right here. Bulgaria, Bulgarians in the Macedonian regions deserve and should study Bulgarian history as it is, unadulterated by lies and other misleading definitions. The foreign influence over current day Macedonia and the artificial replacement of history, such as events, names and affiliations, must be stopped. Propaganda of a Macedonian nation is another attack on Bulgaria and it is an implementation to divide and conquer. Let's look at the map of Plovdiv or Philippopolis. So with this, I'm going to end here. I'm going to let you guys ponder, think about the um, facts that you have been taught in school. Maybe not. If you were taught, maybe they were wrong as the popular school books present them. Um, I will close this part seven with this. I thank you for your attention, for your time. Please stay, stay tuned. I will follow up with a part eight where I will talk more about the Chinese history and Egypt in relation to ancient Bulgaria. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to my channel if you wish to receive more of this information. If you're not interested, if you get triggered, that's completely fine. I respect you. Uh, my hope is to make the factual information about truth available to the world and English is one of those languages that most people nowadays understand so I happen to speak it so it makes perfect sense um so stay tuned I appreciate you and I hope that you have a great rest of your day thank you